For more, I want to bring in attorney and legal analyst Ari Aramesh. Ari, thanks very much for being with us. So the defense claims the men acted lawfully under the state's citizen's arrest law, which was in effect at the time but has since been repealed. From the footage that has been shown, did these men have any legal grounds for stopping Arbery in the first place? And were any of them protected under that law? Uh, Georgia's uh, citizen's arrest statute at the time goes back to the mid-1800s. I want to repeat, mid-1800s. It hadn't been repealed. It hadn't been revised. It was still on the books when Ahmed Arbery was killed uh, by Mr. McMichael with the assistance of these two other gentlemen, McMichael and Brian. Uh, so according to that citizen's arrest statute, which is the basis of the defendant's defense, uh, well, they would, they would have to witness an imminent crime, a crime in progress, or something immediately happening. So a couple of factors here. A, they should witness a crime. There has to be a very high probability of a crime happening, or the arrest has to be made. And I'm sorry, the arrest has to be made immediately after the crime has happened. Now, five minutes later may not be immediate. Ten minutes later or the day after, definitely not immediate. The defense here did not witness Mr. Aubrey commit any crime or a felony. They uh, saw him at a construction site, trespass at best. And all the references they made to past criminal activity at that construction site goes back to a week prior, to two weeks prior, to three weeks prior. So the citizen's arrest defense here is not a very strong one. If we throw that out, they don't really have much of a self-defense case there. And at that point, if the jury addresses these issues, I would say they have a pretty good chance of convicting. Having, having said that, juries are like a lockbox. It's very, very hard to predict how juries behave and what the outcome might be. We have a 12-member jury, 11 white, one black person. Uh, again, it's extremely difficult to guess with some accuracy or with any degree of certainty how they're going to uh, decide this case. But the citizens arrest theory, they didn't witness a felony. And it wasn't immediate. And on top of that, if you throw that out, the idea of self-defense, if you are the provocateur at this point, you are forfeiting the privilege of self-defense. So it makes it a much more difficult case for defense here. Well, one of the defense lawyers is getting backlash over remarks she made about Arbery's physical appearance. Let's listen to some of what she said. Turning Ahmad Arbery into a victim after the choices that he made does not reflect the reality of what brought Ahmad Arbery to Satilla Shores in his khaki shorts with no socks to cover his long, dirty toenails. Ari, what's your take? What do you make of those comments? Uh, this is just outright deplorable, the uh, statement made by uh, uh, the defense counsel here, the long, dirty toenails. Uh, if this is a racist dog whistle, uh, it might have the impact. It might have. It might result in a bad backlash by, uh, by the jury. Um, it, it just uh, comes across as as badly as it sounds. A long, dirty toenail. And to add to that, uh, what's really important to note is that Mr. Aubrey was actually wearing sneakers. And Mr. Uh, uh, McMichael and Ryan did not see his feet. Uh, he was wearing sneakers. So uh, to say that Aubrey came to our neighborhood, to their neighborhood, and he was, you know, and he was dirty and he had these khaki uh, shorts and he had these long toenails. Uh, it's just deplorable. I don't think this is going to help their cause, even though it's it's no longer even a dog whistle. It's pretty blatantly out there, uh, you know, making uh, co comments that have been uh, that it's just uh, some people would say it's flat out racist. So the jury is deliberating nine counts against each defendant. Will they have to reach a verdict on all counts? Well, the, the most important count here are the counts of felony murder. And the uh, so that the prosecution did a very good job describing and uh, putting sort of in, in, in uh, making it tangible uh, for the jury that even if you didn't pull the trigger, you're all responsible for this murder. How does this work? Uh, if you go to a bank with two co-felons to rob a bank. It doesn't matter who pulls the trigger. All the bank robbers, all the accused bank robbers are now accused murderers because they're all in it together. In the commission of a felony, they chased Ahmed Arbery. They haunted, they, they hunted him down. They dragged him, they beat him, 
Then they falsely imprisoned him. And they pulled the trigger. In this process, everybody who was there, Mr. Bryan, who filmed it, tagged along, and Mr. McMichael, the, the, the senior McMichael who was there with his son, they are all equally responsible. And uh, they can get uh, up to life in prison for this. But again, I think the prosecution has done a phenomenal job here. They have made the case tangible within the boundaries of the law, breaking down the law and making it tangible for the jury to reach a verdict. Uh, and uh, again, it's very hard to guess how things are going to come out. But again, the defense here had a much tougher case defending uh, the, the McMichaels and Brian, as opposed to uh, the Arbery case, which was there's plenty of evidence and, and, and the prosecution did a fantastic job. All right, Ari Aramesh, thanks very much. Thank you, Lorraine.